right, guys, right here, PA here. Just want to say welcome to today's news, Uber News. All right, everyone knows today and over the past couple days, there's been crazy stuff going on with uh, New York City and them doing scheduled shifts and things of that nature, okay? Now, I actually came across this news article today um, online, so I wanted to, to bring it to everyone's attention as soon as possible, okay? Um, apparently, Uber is suing New York City over the cruising cap. Now, if anybody doesn't know what the cruising cap is, that is basically, um, back in August, the TLC, which is the taxi limousine company, or commission, sorry, voted to enact a cruising cap to reduce the number of vehicles that drive below 96th Street, which is about two-thirds of the way up Central Park, the whole way down to 1st Street and where like 9-11 uh, Financial District and all that is, it's the whole way from the bottom, the whole way up two-thirds of Central Park. So literally pretty much three-quarters of Manhattan, or I'm sorry, of New York's main area, okay? Apparently, Uber is suing the city for the rule, arguing that is arbitrary and preemptive and otherwise contrary to the law. Okay, now I'm reading this. Um, I'm going to read this somewhat verbatim, and I will put a link to this article in the description below. Okay, it says, When the rule was announced, TLC said that 41% of the time for hire vehicles were on the road. They were spent idling, okay? The reason why um, Uber has been doing these shifts in New York and not letting certain people get on the app at certain times, starting, I think it was yesterday, was mainly because of this. A lot of people were sitting idling and taking up too much space, and it was basically causing congestion in Manhattan, okay? So the TLC has said that 41% of the vehicles were spent in idle sitting without passengers. This cap requires app companies, Uber, Lyft, Juno, those, to reduce the number of idle vehicles with no passengers in the Manhattan core below 96th Street to 31% by August of 2020. Along with the cruising cap, the TLC announced in August that it would extend a cap on four higher licenses. But in the lawsuit, Uber says that the rule was product of a rushed and unlawful process, arguing that the city based the extremely ambitious 31% target on a deeply flawed economical model. And doing so without responding to the comments from drivers and the community around it, who opposed this law rule who opposed this rule okay so basically uber's lawsuit against the tlc and new york city is saying that they didn't do enough research into the community and the drivers that drive okay drivers flexibility is already being threatened by mayor the mayor of new york i'm sorry Mayor D. Blasio, yeah, the mayor of New York, and the cruise and crap will only make that worse, okay? Um, Harry Hartfield, a spokesperson for Uber, told Curbed, which is the article that I'm reading, in a statement that this arbitrary rule uses flawed economic models, okay? Additionally, this lawsuit argues that 31% target is not an achievable goal and that no other point-to-point -point service providing mostly individual rides has ever achieved similar percentages and that it would threaten the viability of ride-sharing model and its current as it currently exists, jeopardizing the benefits this model has created for riders and drivers. Okay, The complement also alleges that target levels of utilize, utilization can be sustained because among no other reason, TLC considers in route time or the time spent picking up passengers as cruising. So in other words, if I'm picking somebody up 
from point A to point, like where I'm at to point A, where I pick my passenger up, they're considering that time in, as cruising because nobody's actually in the car. Whereas once you pick the passenger up and you take them from point A to point B, they don't consider that cruising because somebody is physically in the car. So in other words, they just want to see people in the cars all the time, which does make sense. But if you don't have people there, then you're going to have a supply and demand issue because you're not going to have enough cars on the road when you need them. And we all know Manhattan, trying to get in and out of Manhattan, because most people that, at least I would assume, 90% of the people that drive for Uber, Lyft, Juno, or whatever in Manhattan don't live in Manhattan. So if you only have a certain amount of people in there and automatically you need more demand for drivers, how's that going to work? Because they live either further up in the island or they live over in Brooklyn or the Bronx, okay? So it's going to take time for those people to get there. I mean, have they not thought about this? Okay. So Uber is continuing to fight back for the people of New York City. Um, this says, they will continue for fighting for the people of New York City against a company that seeks to put profit first. The people and drivers, they serve last. Which is uh, what the city spokesperson said. I don't believe this. This is ridiculous. But basically, this is saying that Uber is suing New York because they don't agree with what they're telling them they have to do. Okay, this says Uber has plenty of money to sue against life saving rules that protect drivers drowning in a race to the bottom, but apparently not enough money to actually pay the drivers. That I actually agree with. Uber wastes too much money fighting for, again, AB5. Spent a shitload of money to protest against AB5 and try to get drivers to not sign it or not put it forth. They're spending, I don't know how much money on this lawsuit against New York City. However, if they would just pay their drivers a little bit more, wouldn't have that problem. So that I actually do agree with. Um, and that was one of the Taxi Worker Alliance guys said that statement. So last week, Uber blamed the minimum wage and utilization rate on the company's decision to log drivers off. Now Uber wants to be able to flood the streets without limit and keep app drivers with their cars empty for longer, all the while wiping out yellow taxis and other sectors. I do not agree with that. I firmly agree and I firmly believe, and I've said it plenty of times, that this job, if you want to call it a job because you do get paid for it, is not considered a full-time job unless you have the market for it. But again, it's not in, in my mind, it's not considered a full-time job. It's not even considered a part-time job. I consider this a side gig or a side hustle, okay? Now, if you put in the hours, then you can make it a part-time job or a full-time job. But most people go out when the time is right. Me personally, in my market, I'll go out one or two hours every day in the morning maybe, and I'll go out Friday and Saturday nights for six to eight hours, it, again, depending on if it's busy or not. But unless you live, you live in a crazy, crazy market, you can't make this job pay enough to cover your taxes, your gas, all of your maintenance and overhead costs, your insurance, like literally everything that an employee, an employer would pay you to make it worth it. Because at the end of the day, if you're only getting paid 20 bucks an hour and you take 30% out for taxes, another, let's say 20% out for overhead costs you're only going to be making $10 an hour and that's pretty much minimum wage in most places or close to minimum wage in most places. Okay, so it doesn't make sense. All right. But anyway, I just wanted to bring that to you guys with, like I said, with everything else going on with New York City and all the scheduled shift changes and whatever the hell that is. Um, when I came across the article that Uber was suing New York City, I figured it was something I needed to say because it was kind of funny that 
in my mind, that they can spend all this money for AB5 and suing New York and all this other stuff, even though they're like always negative every quarter, they can spend all this money on, on doing this stuff, but they can't just give us the old 80, 20 or 70, 30 that we used to get, um, like two years ago. So, all right, guys, ride chairs PA out for today. I hope you guys have a great week and, uh, I look forward to hearing what you guys think about this. Everybody take care. Right your PA out. Also, again, guys, I just want to say one more thing. Thank you again for joining the channel if you already have and for dinging the bell. Uh, if you have not done either of those, please feel free to do them now. And I look forward to hearing from you guys later. Peace.